predecessors the elders in Islam have stated that just like the world whatever job or duty you have for success to attain success in a task the precondition the biggest precondition is regularity regularity consistency to stick firm to that task when you stick firmly to a task consistent robust on that task, then inshallah Allah Ta'ala will instill success into that task. So in the same way, it is stated that there be a little bit, but you should be consistent and always. Even if it's a little bit, but it should always be consistent. So it's better than having more. It's better to have more and you only do something a few times or irregularly. Better than that is to have a little bit, but to do regularly. In the same way Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given us the tawfiq, the ability to do dhikr, this is a great amal, a great action in accordance, in relation to the world and the hereafter. You know and we realize what are the benefits of dhikr. So fortunate and lucky are those people who attain the dhikr, the remembrance of Allah with the tawfiq Allah Ta'ala has given this. If we attain it easily, if you attain something easily, then you value that item less or that thing less. When you attain something with difficulty and striving and effort, then you value and appreciate that item more. In the same way, the dhikr of Allah, the pious predecessors are elders in Islam who did mujahadat, who struggled, who strove to learn dhikr, to perfect their dhikr, to attain the benefits, just like the Naqshbandi Mashaikh who uh, followed the lessons and they progress the levels and there's history in this in tasawwuf in the science of rectification and purification there are in the history of islam great pious predecessors and elders and the walis of allah who took hold of this path of tazkiyah purification and how much they made effort and they strove the amount of effort they made allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the more effort they made the more allah ta'ala gave them faiz and blessings and rewards so we also do dhikr and they also did dhikr What's the difference in our dhikr and our doing and there what they did? The first difference is that they had qadr. They appreciated and valued the dhikr of Allah. Allah Ta'ala's remembrance that definitely, most definitely, most verily, this is a great na'am of Allah. And how did they attain that value and appreciation when they read the Qur'an, the ahadith, they read and learnt and understood and believed in the benefits of Allah Ta'ala's dhikr. And then when they heard from other people, other pious people, they said, ah, this is a good action. And when then that precious diamond came into their laps like that event I heard that there's something that's very precious or this is a precious diamond or stone or pearl so then that transfers to my mind and I value that item when I see it so when you attain that precious stone at some part time in your life how much you'll be in awe of that item that you've grabbed for example the people who win the lottery ah this week's lottery it's rolling over cycling over then the pictures come of the winners the one multi multi millions in the tens of millions oh they've and even the deendar people say oh oh mashallah a lot of money he's earned isn't it they say this imagine imagine this how much we value wealth and money or if somebody's bought a car, somebody else has bought a new car, he brings the new car out into the road and he won the lottery and he had an accident, you realize that the husband and wife, they passed away. So where did that lottery go that they won? Then it gets distributed, shared out to the hospitals or into charity, etc. So this is not something to be happy about, is it? The thing that we should be happy about is when Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, that we realize and learn the dhikr of Allah. We've got the tawfiq, we've been given the ability to do dhikr. And those individuals who got the tawfiq to do dhikr, then they worked on that, they strived, they were grateful that Allah Ta'ala then gave them more in return. In the same way Allah Ta'ala gave them ni'amas in amat, rewards in their life. And then imagine what they're going to get in the hereafter, even more than that. Their names, their 
they are repeated in the world even after they've passed away. So imagine if their graves they are and they're being repeated, their names, how their akhra will be good. So Allah Ta'ala, my friends, has given us tawfiq, me, you, we've been given the ability, the understanding. Allah Ta'ala is bringing us and I'm explaining to you, try to increase our awareness of this khas, good action of dhikr. Other deeds we perform, worship acts, fine, we should do that as well. But this is a majlis and assembly of dhikr. And that praise be to Allah, we should value this, we should appreciate this, hold it in high esteem. When we hear and read or hear and are told the ahadith about dhikr and these discussions we have, we should keep on listening to them time and time again so we can build and increase our qadr. This is a great, great action Allah has given to us, His remembrance. Don't think that because we can come here easily, oh, this is something normal, common. This is not a common action, great action. Think that this is the basis of the success of our life in this world and the hereafter. It's on one thing. Just a little bit I'm requesting you to understand what I'm saying here. That in the Qur'an, if you take the summary of the Qur'an with regards to insan, the human being, Allah Ta'ala says that that individual will be successful, who will come to me with qalbin salim. This is the summary, the extract of the Qur'an. He who has the qalbin salim and goes to Allah after death will be successful. Allah Ta'ala says, he who comes to me with a clean, pure heart, then I will look towards his deeds. Then I will look at where are his salah, where's his hajj, where's his umrah, where's his other worship, what are the actions he did. But the first test, Allah says, the litmus test that we have to pass is, Allah says, I want to see that did you have a pure and clean heart when you came to me in the hereafter. Do you have that? One thing, that that is the fulcrum, the pivot to the success of all our deeds that will be weighed, the precondition, the litmus test, the pre-test, you can say the trial, the first question or the first test that will be taken and we will have to prove is that did we have qalbi and salim? This is Qur'an. Qur'an, the verse of the Qur'an, Allah says, the person, my believer, who comes to me with a clean, pure, sincere, full of humbleness heart. Now Allah says, if your heart is good, then his deeds must be good. Take him into paradise. Send him into paradise. And this is going, called going into paradise without accounting. And this is about those people who do dhikr, the dhakirin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he can do whatever he wants. What does he not know? He knows everything about our deeds. What does he need to know more about it? Allah says, I know everything. The person whose heart is very pure, then his salah will be pure. Beautiful. His Qur'an recitation will be beautiful. His uh, Safa Marwa uh, worship will be beautiful. His Tawaf around the Kaaba will be beautiful. And standing in front of Multazim when he asked for me, the Dhakir whose heart is pure and humble and sincere, it is beautiful. Allah says, I was with him all the time. But his heart was Kalmi Salim. I don't need to weigh his deeds. Go, your deeds have been accounted for already in advance. Go into paradise without reckoning. This is Kalmi and Salim, isn't it? So what is the deed to attain Kalmi and Salim? How do we attain the pure, clean, sincere, humble heart? What is a Sakinatul Qalb? Yeah? To get the sakina in the heart. How do we do this? To, 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 to make the heart glow and shine full of peace and pureness and cleanliness and sincerity. Allah says, I want that heart. I want that heart for every brother and sister, man and woman, male and female. Sakina tul kalb, to attain this rank, status, condition, emotion, we have to do dhikr Allah. So imagine the precious pearl of dhikr for the hereafter and we don't pay attention to it. We have to force a brother or the believer to do dhikr. We have to explain to them the benefits. How sad. We should be so happy. We should be so happy. Allah, millions and billions of gratitude to you, Allah. We're so grateful to you, Allah. You've given us the ability to understand and do your dhikr. And from dhikr you get qalbin salim. The heart becomes clean, pure, washed. And then you start to succeed in the hereafter, towards the hereafter. So for this, it's essential that Allah Ta'ala, what He's given us to is amal, this amal of dhikr, we need to be ready. Regular with dhikr, consistent. The more I'm consistent in my performance of dhikr, the more I'm regular and steadfast in my performance of dhikr. I'll give you an example. I work somewhere, I've got a career, I'm a taxi driver, I run a shop, or I work in an office, in admin, etc. I'm a clerk. What is the meaning of steadfastness? That I make my morning and evening schedule. I'm going to go to office 7 a.m. or 6 a.m., then I leave the office, then I have to drive the taxi, and regularly I do this. I'm steadfastness, so I make my timings, my schedule. I'll come, I'll attend this way, and I'll fix my timings for working and for earning and for so, so-called so success. So, for example, this is the half hour, or the woman, she says, I have to make food at home, I have to make the chapati, I have to make the dish, I have to collect the children, drop the children. But it is not forgiven for that person to leave dhikr. Allah says, every Everyone, al mu'minina wal mu'minat wal muslimina wal muslimat wal qanitina al qanitat, where the man is mentioned, the woman's mentioned, where the male is mentioned, the female is mentioned. 
Everyone's included. Kathir and Kathira dhikr, abundance dhikr. Allah says that those dhakirat, wa dhakirina, wa dhakirat, that they will get ajrun adhima. There are many people, mashallah, they have 10 children or 8 children or 12 children. This is hadith. That that woman who has more children, Allah Ta'ala says that she will be the best woman who extends and increases the ummah. Yes, not all, oh, please, please finish. Allah Ta'ala says, increase my ummah. Rasulullah says, ummah, I wanted to increase and multiply. I'll be proud of that ummah. So there's no restriction, no excuse that women folks say I have to work at home, clean, or the children go after, or the man says I have to go work, I'm busy, I've got schedule. No, we shouldn't have excuses. Let's not put obstacles and barriers. We need to make a schedule also for dhikr. Half an hour, take out. Okay, if we haven't got that 15 minutes, if you haven't got 15 minutes, 10 minutes. If you can't, take out 5 minutes. Five minutes if you haven't got then three times at least sit down and say, Allah, 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 even that is istikamat. If you do that regularly, it's the name of Allah. You know that Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala knows he's got only three minutes in the morning, evening, he's got to run to the office, his dunya, not due to laziness, he's forced to. Then sit down, Allah, 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 Allah. That's it, and then do dua and go to work. That's your dhikr of the morning. That's your regular dhikr of the morning. Allah Ta'ala says, I'm not looking at quantity. Rather, I look at the quantity, not the quantity, the quality. We say, tell me more dhikr. Give me more dhikr. We can't do it. We don't have the time. We don't have the courage. We don't have the desire and passion. We don't want to do it. We know we're not going to do it regularly. And we say, give me more dhikr, give me dhikr. Then the next day I do dhikr and then the day after that I leave it and then I go into reverse gear. And this is the same way in nawafir, the voluntary acts, dhikr, the majlis. And same way this gathering, alhamdulillah with the blessings of Allah, the mercy of Allah, we have the gatherings in Zakaria Masjid. Morning and evening there's the dhikr of Allah. So how many in the week? Seven times two is fourteen. What a great gathering. Majlis, what a great, great situation. If you get 14 majlis in the week, morning and evening, seven days, tell me how fortunate will be those individuals in this generation and in this dunya that we're sitting in, this world, in this environment, morning and evening, we have the majlis dhikr, morning and evening, Allahu Akbar, Allah is great. And that individual who is steadfast in this, in joining, partaking in that majlis, imagine his rank and status. Little thing we think, we think it's a little thing, look how our time is passing. How our time has passed. Can we not take all of this action? That the 14 majlis in the week, should we leave these? Do you think they won't give us reward in the grave? They won't give us reward in akhara, in the hereafter, on the day of judgment? Allah Ta'ala's dhikr, 14 gatherings a week, 7 in the morning, 7 in the evening, 7 days a week, we sit down, say an hour, hour and a half in the day. Then who else will those people be? Will they not be walis of Allah? Will they not, do they need horns on the head to be willis? Well, tell me the maqam, the status they will attain. The karam, the mercies, the blessings of Allah to attain this gathering. So what we have to understand here is, alhamdulillah, 14 gatherings on top of that. Allah Ta'ala says, shakartum la'azidannakum. Yes, so Allah, we did 14 gatherings, morning and evening. Allah Ta'ala says, no, not 14, just here in one place. Let's start announcing in the other masajid. And people like us, useless, we have nothing, no abilities, nothing. But Allah open the doors of the masjids. Now how many masjids are there? We have this situation as well now. We have uh, Monday here, Tuesday here, Thursday here, Friday here. There are two days left. Now Haji Sahib is trying to allot those two days as well. He's striving. He's, and somewhere we'll, we'll go and ascribe, assign those days as well. So what the situation is coming back to the point... That all you, mashallah, we are all traveling in that same boat, which is the dhikr of Allah. And what is in that boat, that journey, we have to have steadfastness, steadfastness. So those people are free, retired like me, who are not doing bone idol, doing anything. They're ill, even the ill people. You can be lying down in your mattress ill, you can come and sit on the chair here as ill. What difference does it make? If you're lying down in your bed, you're ill. Then if you've got the ability that you can push yourself to the masjid, sit on the chair and you're ill. What difference does it make? What are you going to do? For the ill person, there's no restriction. Ah, may not be that you can't get up, may it be that you're not ill, that you're vomiting, you're so weak and you're so fragile. Okay, then that's an excuse. But if you've got an illness that you can walk, you're not ill. What can I say if you can move, shake your hands, limbs, arms, legs, your body? Come to the masjid somehow and sit down and partake because this is Ni'matul Jannah. This is the reward of Jannah. So what should we try to do is make a schedule, is make a program. These majalis, alhamdulillah, we have to be regular in this. We have to go to all of the gatherings, all of the gatherings. It's not hard. It's not hard, okay? So we see that I'm busy, I'm working, I can't, okay, can I come in the morning? Yes, I can't come in the evening, well, I can come in the evening, I can't go this time, well, I can go to Masjid al-Falah, I can go to Masjid Zakaria, the masjids that we can go to, where the work is not hindering that, then come to those two evenings and be regular in those two evenings. If you can go three regularly, three gatherings in the week regular, then be steadfast in those. I see some brothers, mashallah, they come to one or two gatherings only, but they come regularly, because due to work, they can't come to the other gatherings, but I see from some time, 
that they've chosen and grabbed hold of those two, three gatherings in the week and they're steadfast and robust in attending them. Alhamdulillah, Mubarak to them. Congratulations. And I know, he knows that person that I've got these two days, three days, I'm free, I want to reach there. And those people have the whole week, they're free, they should be happy. That my taste is changed. Today we're praying in Fala Masjid Salah. Tomorrow in the other Masjid we'll pray Salah. Then the environment changes. Your taste, you listen to a Qarat of one Imam. Then tomorrow the Qarat of another Imam. And then sometimes there's more heater. The temperature is higher. We go to Makki Masjid. You have to take all your clothes off. Yes, just the vest is left. It's so warm in there, mashallah. Makki Masjid is tomorrow, isn't it? So come with your vest and with the uh, boxer shorts because, or, or the pants. Because it's warm there. But this is the mahal. This is the environment. And I start to slowly reveal the points, the hidden points slowly slowly alhamdulillah so start from here so this is good we go to different atmospheres climates different masjids different mahal different environments different people alhamdulillah and then we're regular in our dhikr but this is a very great action a big action Allah Ta'ala has given to us so what should we do with dhikr of Allah become mustaqil regular steadfast consistent and especially those individuals our satis our brothers who live close to masjid the zakaria morning and evening they should be 100% regular shouldn't they Shouldn't they? It is so sad that the person who's not regular, who doesn't attend regularly, he is taking loss into his book of deeds. We, we should be crying for this fact that in the morning, the person who doesn't come to the masjid, doesn't sit in dhikr and doesn't pray fajr salah in congregation. What, how does his day pass? Think. How will that person's day pass who doesn't come to the masjid in the morning and partake in the gathering? From the morning he is earned loss. He's thrown his day into loss from the morning. He could have gone, but he was trapped in sleeping or this issue or that issue and he didn't come. My brothers, this is also steadfast is that if we cannot sit in the whole gathering from beginning to end, then sit in half the gathering. If you can't sit in half, then sit for five minutes or include yourself, join in with three kalamat, three of the verses. Then consider, you can consider you were involved in the gathering. Then depart and go and do what you have to do. But at least join, partake for that fixed amount of time regularly. So inshallah, let's do dua that we are regular in dhikr and the wazaif, the lessons you've been given, that you take hold of them with regularity. Remember one thing very, very carefully, that every, most definitely, definitely, in every condition, and every form, that dhikr of Allah will give benefit. It doesn't matter how it's being done, however you're doing dhikr with your eyes closed, or etc. And you don't feel like, even then you're doing dhikr, your mind doesn't let you, but you still do dhikr, but you're regular, you close your eyes and say, oh, let me fulfill my lesson, never be in the deception. That, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, am I benefiting? So, no, don't think like this. Allah knows that we're remembering Him. Allah knows that we're sitting for His sake. Allah knows everything that we're doing. That my servant is sitting for me, but at this point, he is not concentrating. He is immersed in busyness. He's tired. He's exhausted. But due to me, for my sake, Allah says, he is mentioning my name so that he can include his name in the list of those people who did Allah Ta'ala's dhikr and including those in the court of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala likes that action from his insan servant. Otherwise, what are we? We can't do dhikr of Allah. We're not, we're not capable. We're not capable. But if we do dhikr even in that extreme hardness, Allah will accept it and appreciate it. Allah has given us a big, big, open playing field with regards to doing dhikr. Allah Ta'ala says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Allah says, you do me, my dhikr remember me, I will remember you. What a great facility. Allah not saying that you have to be sitting alert, and you have to look at this direction, you have to hear, and your tongue's got to move, and how dare you close your eyes, and you should have to have wudu, etc. No. Allah says, you remember me, I will remember you. No other precondition. What a great, great open playing field opportunity. We'll do it, won't we? Say, inshallah, okay. Okay, become regular, steadfast, come three times a week or two times a week, but don't feel frustrated in your heart. Morning and evening, fulfill your lessons. Inshallah, this dhikr of Allah will take us across the mountain peaks, inshallah, into, the, into, into paradise. There was a person who passed away. Allahu Akbar. He was a pious person, mashallah, from Darul Ulum, and he passed away. And everyone knows him, mashallah, famous personality, muttaqi, good, pious person, read a lot of Qur'an, and a lot of Qur'an he did. And he was a student, uh, he had many students, and he passed away recently. And his son-in-law told me about him, that he used to do a lot of dhikr, and he was in the hospital, he was doing dhikr, Allah, 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 he was reciting Allah Ta'ala's name, while he was lying down in the hospital. This is what I was told. And then what happened, he said that, before passing away, just some moments before passing away, this time will come to all of us, my brothers, listen carefully and openly, attentively. This is not the first time I've heard this, I've heard this many times before about other people. And that Allah Ta'ala has mentioned about this event, that this is 
the message we've got from the noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are two duas from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they explain to us and teach us what will happen. So, he said that his son was there also, possibly in, uh, someone else, and he was about to pass away, he was close to death, he was doing the dhikr of Allah. Look at this event. The dhakir, the person remembers Allah. Look at his end time. And while he was doing dhikr, remembering Allah, then from his hand, he said, move, move, move back. And he started doing dhikr. He said, stop, 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 and with anger. And he was, mashallah, he had the passion and he was a person of passion. He said, stop, move, move away. Then he started doing thicker. Then he said, that who are you telling to move away? There's no one here. It's just me sitting here. He said, no, no, no. Just now shaitan came to me to divert me, to try to deviate me. I said, get away from me. Shaitan comes at the time of end al The shaitan comes to attack. His final attack comes at the time of death, shaitan. And that's when he tries to take the iman away from the believer. And at this time, if we can pass the test and overcome the attack of shaitan, we will be successful. At the time of death, the shaitan is like the... Uh, I remember an old woman, I've told you her event a few times before. She used to call another woman from a locality and call her to her company and said, give me five or ten minutes every day. She was an old woman and uh, this is somebody we know. And she said, why? Why should I come five or ten minutes? She said, my daughter come, that there are three kalimats that make me revise. I will keep forgetting. You keep telling me, am I reciting them correctly or not? What's the first? So when she would come and say, who is your Rabb? What answer shall I give? Man Rabbukum. She used to revise the questions. I'm preparing for the grave when I go to the grave so I don't forget the answers. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. She said, I don't want to forget the answers, the questions. This is the yaqeen, the certainty that they had with regards to Allah and her death that was going to come definitely. So Qari Sahib said, get away, get away, go away, go away. He said, this was shaitan who came to deviate me, tried to attack me and he tried to attack me and extract my iman. So I started doing dhikr. He started doing dhikr and shaitan ran away at that time. And then his, his death came and his ruh went on its journey to the heavens and he was successful in his task. If we don't do dhikr, if we don't do dhikr, then those things will come to us at death time because shaitan will come. Shaitan is cunning. And he will whisper in our ears and we will change ourselves. And we will go and depart uh, this world without iman, without belief. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala will say that this, you did not prepare yourself for death. You did not prepare, you didn't pay attention to dhikr. You say, oh dhikr, what's this? Oh, they just sit down doing dhikr. Oh, leave them. They're good, mashallah, pious. Leave them to their task and we can leave. Is this... This is what, how small and insignificant we think is the gathering of dhikr. We walk past the gathering and praise the dhakreen. Oh, there's a gathering of dhikr, mashallah, they're doing good deed, good action. This is not the role for us to play, to walk past the dhakreen and praise them. We have to do it ourselves. There are many events about them, final moments, the final days. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, the shaitan in the mawt, at the time of mawt, he attacks hujjatul mawt. That at the time of death, at the time of passing away, these are the du'as that we are taught, that do du'a to Allah, the shaitan, Allah save me from shaitan, may he not attack me during the time of my death, and take my iman or his jinn, his works, workers. What does the jinn do? A person, even when he's alive, the jinn influences us. You know we say, oh there's black magic, or witchcraft, and what's these people, what does the jinn do with a person? He does silly actions, he overtakes a person's mind, mentality, if somebody's weak. And that time the person's living, He's vibrant, he's breathing, he's walking around. So what about when we're lying down about to die and shaitan attacks us then? We'll be in such a worse, weak position. But if there's a dhakir, who did dhikr of Allah, who remembered Allah, and he did it with this need, that Allah, I'm preparing for my death, I'm preparing for the time when I depart from this world, and when I'm lying down in the hospital, or on my deathbed, just like I said, he was lying down, and it's my final moments, seconds, and shaitan will definitely come at that time. There are many events, he definitely will come. He definitely will try to earn his custom at the death time. Not just a few people, everyone. And some people say they can see shaitan. Some people they pass away, they can't say what happened. But with everybody this occurs. Shaitan will come and try his best with his jama'ah, with his workers. That's why I said that when people, uh, when somebody's about to die, tell him to recite surah, uh, the, the kalima and surah yaseen. When you're reciting this, and shaitan will be doing his action and trying his best. But it depends the person who you are praying for. What is his attention saying at that moment? What was his preparation for death. Why did he not listen to Allah and obey Allah during his life? Why did he not understand what is the importance of dhikr? Why didn't he understand this hadith that Kulu la ilaha illallah, the person who says la ilaha illallah from his tongue at the time of death will go into paradise? 
paradise. That was the time, that was the chance. So at that time from our tongue, what should come out only? The kalima. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That's it. Allah, you are the one. Now we're sitting here fine, healthy. We do bad actions. We're doing la ilaha illallah. We've got other intentions. Other actions are going to come. When that time comes at death, when we're weak, when the mind's not there and the jinnat and shaitan will come and try to attack us and nobody will come, no scholar will come and help us, the system, no amali, and the shaitan will grab our heart. But the dhikr of Allah will be such full of nur at that time that the jinn and shaitan will not be able to attack our iman. It's been stated that nur, the light it makes that person light. And around him there will be no darkness and it makes the shaitan run away. The nur of dhikr of Allah. You will see this. We know this, we hear this. So this is a great deed, the dhikr of Allah. But that dhikr in which there is a steadfast and this promise today, that from today... We will not leave dhikr of Allah, Allah Ta'ala's remembrance, and the assemblies, the majalis of dhikr of Allah, totally, regularly, firmly, we will attend and take part, and we will give the highest importance to the dhikr gathering, that at that time there's nothing greater than that at that time. That this majlis, may be due to this majlis, that in my heart will come that feeling and condition, emotion, that when I'm about to die, this kalama the, of Allah Ta'ala's remembrance will come into my tongue. That's it. Maybe I did dhikr in the morning, the example, you did dhikr or I did dhikr and the whole day passed, didn't it? In that day, the shaitan may have made me commit a sin that our iman starts to shake inside the heart and he tries to take our iman during the day. How do we know the sins we committed during the day? We don't know. Shall I tell you what sins we may have done? One sin of kibr. Pride is such a sin about which it is stated. It is stated, the person who has kibar, even the hair's width of pride in the heart, mustard seeds weight of pride in the heart, he cannot whiff the fragrance of paradise. Forget about going there. So what guarantee do I have that during this day I had no pride in my heart? Tell me, have I got a guarantee? Which person has not done kibar? So what is it? What do we have to do? I did dhikr in the morning, that's good. I did dhikr in the morning, I earned the good deeds until the evening during the day, and I carried out pride, actions of pride. Then I've detached myself or gone further away from Jannah, paradise. So then Allah Ta'ala suddenly gives us the gathering of dhikr in the evening and I come to that regularly. Then I go back into paradise. So that's the difference. Yes, we continuously cycle and recycle our strength of Iman. The more gatherings of dhikr you can attend, take all of them. If you think I went in the morning, why do I have to go in the evening? No, during the day I did many sins. I'll go and sit down in the evening. I'll go to that majlis, to that gathering. After that it will be announced that whoever came to the majlis, I've forgiven him, Allah Ta'ala says. I've forgiven him. So this is the announcement the angels will definitely announce. As soon as this majlis finishes, the gathering of dhikr in which we are included, our people are come and they gather. As soon as that gathering finishes and people leave, the last person's gone, the angels come and give the stamp. Jannati, 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 announcement, paradise, paradise for this person, paradise for this. What a great action. So you coming here, us coming here, is this beneficial for us or not? Let's do dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's pray to Allah that Allah don't let us pass away. Don't let us die unless we have the nur of our dhikr, of your dhikr Allah in our heart. So we should have qadr and value dhikr and appreciate dhikr. So when we're on our deathbed and we're doing dhikr, we should be totally without worry and we should smile and say, Allah, we're about to pass away. We have no worry. We are prepared for death and we have no sadness, no regret. Wala khawfum wala hum yahzanun. No worry about the shop and business or wife or children. Lying down slowly, quietly. He knows he's about to pass away. I'm departing this world and he does dhikr of Allah and he departs from this world. So brothers do Allah Ta'ala's dhikr. Ameen. Recite Durood Sharif.